Scholars in academia are frequently confronted by the need to publish their research. While publication opportunities used to be limited to print-based journals and books, more and more scholars are seeking multimodal publication venues like Computers and Composition Digital Press in order to share their born digital projects. Because print-based texts have been around for so long, one can easily imagine the kind of work an editor does. Correct typos, grammatical errors, and works cited inconsistencies. But there is still some level of mystery involved with multimodal text when it comes to the editing process, especially when we think about all the different kinds of media that go into their production. To help add a level of transparency to the work of a multimodal editor, I interviewed Stephanie Vai, one of the project directors at Computers and Composition Digital Press. An associate professor of writing and rhetoric at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, Stephanie has worked as a project director with Computers and Composition Digital Press since its inception in 2007. Her work has appeared in journals like Computers and Composition, Kairos, Rhetoric, Technology, and Pedagogy, and her textbook eDentity has been adopted nationally by over 50 different institutions. Stephanie is also a co-editor for the review section of the online journal Kairos. In the video that follows, you will learn about the kind of work Stephanie does as a project director. Here's some advice about preparing a multimodal text for publication, and join her in anticipating the next steps for Computers and Composition Digital Press as an academic publisher for scholars in the field of rhetoric and composition. The interview started with an overview of the duties Stephanie performs as a project director for Computers and Composition Digital Press. A project director really is the sort of final step in a project that's going through the Computers and Composition Digital Press. So up until that point, the um, editors or the authors have been working with, uh, you know, various staff. And then once it's really in its kind of final form and it's ready to be looked at for accessibility, for proofreading, copy editing, all those kinds of things, it comes over to me or to Chris Blair, who's the other project director. And we really then go intensively into looking at it and breaking it down um, through all these different elements. Referring to her project director's guide for editing, Stephanie described the editing process through which all projects go. Here's the, the different steps that a project director will go through on a project. First, we go through editing, of course. So reading through the entire thing. Is it clear? Is it correct? And this includes mechanics, grammar, content, years, um, facts, figures, things like that. But then what's really specific to, I think, the multimodal element in the projects that we get is looking at the design next. So it's not just editing. It's also looking at the design and making sure that the design elements are consistent and that they're rhetorically effective. So, for example, um, the use of images, the use of color, the links, the placement of different elements. Is it working? Is it pleasing? Is it rhetorically effective? Is it um, working across different browsers? Does it work on uh, different types of devices? With that design, then thinking about the navigation. So does all the navigation work? Um, and thinking about how somebody might go through this project, this final, you know, edited collection or this um, book. Where will they start? Where can they go? What kind of reading process might they be invited into by the navigation? And again, I think that that's really, really important from a multimodal standpoint because with an article, a print-based document, you have pretty much one reading that you're invited into beginning to end. But of course, with the projects that come out of CCDP, you could choose to read from beginning to end, chapter by chapter, as you might do with a, a normal book or an edited collection, or you can skip around. You can read just smaller sections, especially for someone who's um, a teacher may be looking at an edited collection from CCDP, they're probably not going to assign their students the whole thing. So um, does that navigation set it up so that a reader, a teacher, someone looking at it might be able to say, how could I use this in various ways? What's the, the overall structure and does it make sense? 
And then finally, something that's also incredibly important is the accessibility. So one of the last steps is to look at, is this an accessible document? Uh, do we have, again, like the alt text for all images so that someone who's going to be visually impaired and reading this project with the assistance of a screen reader, will their screen reader technology be able to read the images? And that's, again, not something that you have to think about in a print-based document. So again, thinking about the, the access of the readers, and I think that because Melanie Yurgo works with the board, she's been amazing in helping us think through access and issues of disability in terms of the projects that we're publishing and the um, kind of work that the project directors can do to make sure that as much as possible we can think about all the various kinds of readers who might encounter these texts and make the texts as you know as, as open and inviting and readable as possible as you may recognize through this in-depth description the editing process of a multimodal document can be quite extensive and time consuming. Stephanie explained further. And it takes a lot of time. I mean, this, it takes weeks, months sometimes, depending on how big a project is, to go through all of these different levels and to just kind of painstakingly look at the sentence level issues, the paragraph level issues, the chapter level issues, the project level issues. And depending on how much querying back and forth needs to happen with an author, I mean, this can take quite a while. But at the end, you have a project that you can really be proud of. And I think that that's what I look for then in, in seeing somebody else's project is like, would I be proud of this if I was the editor who had worked with this? Or would I think, oh man, that's not good. <laughs> with her experience as an editor, Stephanie has learned how to interact with authors and produce multimodal projects that both she and the authors can be proud of. Elaborating upon an interaction she had with an author, she offered this advice to scholars looking to create and publish multimodal texts. I was talking with this author and I said, look, you know your subject so well. And because of that, of course, you're making a lot of assumptions about what your audience is going to know. So when you say something, like in this example here, you're assuming that they know what you're talking about. But let's say I'm a reader who's not familiar with this subject. I'm going to be lost, and then everything that comes after that, I'm really going to be missing so much. So what I said to him in this instance is, try to read through the lens of somebody who's maybe coming to your subject with very little background knowledge. Maybe they're coming to your subject for the first time and they're really interested and they want to know more, but they don't know. And that's why they're reading your work is because you're an expert and you're sharing all this expertise. But if you stay at the level of talking to other people who also know as much about the subject as you, this person is, you know, they're not going to be able to enter that conversation. So, I think one piece of advice for potential authors and editors for the Computers and Composition Digital Press would be to think about that um, tension between you're an expert or you're, you're gathering this expertise by getting together authors and edited collection, for example, and everybody is sharing this wonderful knowledge, but at the same time, you can't assume that your readers are necessarily going to be as familiar with the content understand how you want them to navigate, understand what's going on and you have this image here, like make sure to explain in the text why that image is important or what the purpose of that image is. Don't just let an image or a link or a navigational element sort of hang out there and assume that people are know, going to know what to do. Help them, invite them to understand. As the interview continued, Stephanie explained how multimodal compositions come in all shapes and sizes, so each project offers editors a unique experience that requires full interaction with the text. To help illustrate this, Stephanie described her work with author John Center Sapico on his project called Generaciones Narratives. He had a lot of video and audio. What he was doing was 
collecting interview materials from people and he was writing about um, immigrant issues and literacy. And so there were, there were tons of pieces to that. There was all the textual material, there was the embedded videos, there were uh, audio clips. And so when I was working with that particular project, I kind of had to you know, decide for myself as a project director, how am I going to encounter this as an editor? Am I gonna read everything first and then move on to the videos and then move into the audio? And then I thought, well, as nice and neat and tidy as that sounds, it's not gonna work very well. I really am going to have to you know, look at it as a reader would probably be encountering it. So read the text, oh, there's a video, or there's supposed to be a video embedded here, I'll go find the video and I'll play it and I'll listen to it. Oh, there's some pop-up audio here, I'll go listen to that. And I think that that too is part of what is so time consuming about this process is, if you think about it, every single element that somebody includes, a video, a piece of audio, an image, a link. Every time somebody includes that in a project, it has to be checked. So if you send 25 five minute videos, I have to watch 25 five minute videos, sometimes more than once, depending on what's going on. I have to listen to all the audio. And so I think that this is all part of the invisibility of multimodal text production, right? Like we don't often think about all the work that goes into creating something like uh, a 10 minute video. Of course, there's hours and hours of editing and there's listening to it and so on. I think the same thing with a, an edited collection for something like computers and composition digital press. Probably a lot of people don't realize that there's someone who has to sit there and literally open every link, watch every video, listen to every piece of audio, et cetera, et cetera. But there is, and hopefully they love that work, right? Besides working as a project director on multimodal projects, Stephanie has authored a few multimodal texts, including a chapter in Lynn Lewis's edited collection, Strategic Discourse, The Politics of New Literacy Crises, which came out in March of 2015. To show how different editors approach a new project, Stephanie explained how she took her editor's advice in making chapter revisions. But one of the pieces of advice that we got, and I totally agree with, is that we should help readers understand how to navigate this web text. And so literally, when you open up my chapter, it says, navigating this web text, each image will take you to a different section of the web text. Beyond this first page, a small navigation bar will appear in the top right-hand corner, or follow the breadcrumbs at the bottom. So there's multiple ways of navigating depending on how somebody might want to go through there. And it's explicit because what I did at first was I just had images and I assumed people would think, ah, I should click on that image and it'll take me somewhere. That was a, you know, a poor assumption. And that's coming from me doing this kind of work, right? So um, it's something that I even myself need to be aware of to think about as I go through and I compose web texts to remind myself about those different steps that we go through for CCDP and think about, okay, am I being accessible? Am I explaining textually what these images mean? Am I um, giving people multiple ways of navigating through my web text so that I'm not forcing them into one particular path? It's useful for me to remember the sort of things that I want to tell to authors and to editors. As an editor, Stephanie has also had the opportunity to work with scholars who are more inexperienced when it comes to multimodal productions. She offered this advice on how to make a multimodal project more approachable. In my role over at Kairos, I work with a lot of people who have never done multimodal composing, and they're, they're very trepidatious a lot of times. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Please help. I don't think I'm doing this very well. And then they'll look at things like award-winning pieces in Kairos, the exemplars, and they'll go, I can't do that. And we're always like, we don't, we don't need you to do that. <laughs> we need you to do what you want to do. These are the best of the best. But you can do multimodal work. Don't, don't set yourself up to think that it has to be 
this high level. So I think the same thing with computers and composition digital press. Like obviously we want the work coming out to be amazing. But we also don't want people to be scared and to look at things that we've published in the past and go, oh God, we can't do that. That looks so complicated. I mean, it's like any major project. Yeah, it looks terribly complicated when you look at the whole thing as a mass. But when you break it down and say, oh, well, it's these chapters and there's these pieces and oh, you know, once they figured out the design, they reused the design throughout then it starts seeming much more like I could do that you know? And with both of these, um, these types of projects, there are mentors that are available. So if a project goes to the computers and composition digital press, we have two levels of looking at a proposal. One is just a very informal, like shoot us an idea and do we like the idea and is this working well? want to see a full proposal versus looking at a full proposal with some sample chapters to say, yes, this is something that we definitely want to see further. But there's mentorship available. All the people on the staff are perfectly willing to answer questions. So I think if my, my sort of plea to people who are interested in, but maybe feeling scared of jumping into multimodal or open access publishing with something like CCDP is to say, you can do it, and if you feel like you need resources and help, that help is out there. Don't be afraid to ask for it. Our conversation finally turned to a discussion about computers and composition digital press and the role it plays for scholars in the field. Stephanie described how the press has developed over the years and explained why scholarly peer-reviewed multimodal presses are important for the work of rhetoric and writing scholars in academia. I think as the press has grown over the years, we've gotten people who are doing more multimodal things and who are kind of pushing the boundaries of what a book or a edited collection might look like. But we also have some that are really, you know, kind of more traditional in terms of really text heavy, maybe relying on some images, but not so much video or audio content or, or things like that. So it, wildly depends. And I think that that's part of what's interesting about this work is you just never know what is going to come in or what kind of projects we're going to be working with. So it doesn't get boring for sure, which is nice. I think that we don't have enough places currently to publish multimodal work. And I know that that might sound odd given that we have journals like Kairos, uh, Harlot, that we have present tense, um, I'm sure there are others like enculturation, there's, there's others that I'm missing. We've got um, various open access publishers that are great, things like the WAC Clearinghouse and Parlor Press. But I think what CCDP does that's really, really important is it is open access and it's multimodal. And for those people who want to do that kind of work and have it be accessible to a broad swath of readers, that's what the CCDP offered. But there are not enough places to publish multimodal work in our field. And we need more. And I think that as people see the success of presses like CCDP, maybe more will flourish in the future. That's my hope. Because we need outlets for this kind of compelling work. There are projects that can't work as a print-based book. And there are plenty of places to go publish a print-based book. There are plenty of places to publish a mostly print-based book with a few images and things like that. But when you get to something like somebody wants to embed a game or somebody wants uh, you know, heavily video or audio-based work, there's not a ton of places that you can go to. So I think that the emphasis on open access is really, really important. We need more places that are committed to publishing open access. and as such, offering up scholarly research to as broad uh, a group of readers as possible. 
and also to allow for that kind of really compelling digital multimodal work. Considering the ongoing debate about multimodal publication legitimacy, I asked Stephanie about the fears some scholars have when it comes to publishing multimodal pieces, given the academic precedent for print-based publications. I think there's always going to be fears about things like that. And I think that there's fears about multimodal work, right? Um, and I think that that's part of why Cindy and Gail have always made sure to emphasize that this is a peer reviewed press, that we are publishing things that have the intellectual heft of a book. Those are very careful rhetorical choices to reassure people that might be a little wary that yes, this is absolutely scholarly, that these should and have in the past count for promotion and tenure decisions, that this is the same amount of work as a book, it's just in a slightly different modality. But yeah, I think that people absolutely are potentially wary of either open access or multimodal or the combination of the two. And, you know, it's interesting to me because I always think, well, but what's the problem with open access? Like, it, it seems to be beneficial to me that you're allowing for the circulation of scholarly ideas. And so why wouldn't you want that conversation to extend as far as it could? Why wouldn't you want your work to be circulating out there and to have people respond? I don't want to write things that two people read. I want to write things that people read and talk about, have, you know, an opportunity to um, talk back to me and so on. Our conversation finally wound down into a discussion about where Stephanie would like to see computers and composition digital press go in the next five to ten years, and the kinds of projects she'd like to see more of. One of the things that I think is really interesting about some of our publishing platforms like CCBP or Kairos and so on is a lot of times we're, we're talking to people who are really interested in things that we're interested in, so we're almost preaching to the choir in some ways. Like, we talk about multimodal composing and assessment or digital writing to other people who are also interested in multimodal composing or digital writing and so on. I would be really excited to see CCBP um, reach out to maybe some people who don't know about us, who, who are those people who are scared about multimodal publishing, who maybe want to take a chance uh, trying a project like this for the first time. It would be fantastic if there were more individuals who work at schools that are kind of like multimodal. Is that really going to count? Them to, to be able to say yes and look at this project and here's something that I was able to produce. So I would like to see us broaden, you know, the, the author, the editors who are working with us so that Maybe we get some new people in who want to take a chance, who want to try something new, who are willing to take us up on that support. Um, I'd also like to just really see more people push the limits of what's possible within this multimodal framework, because it really is open. And so a lot of what we get will be kind of the HTML based, Here's a lot of print. Um, here's maybe some video audio elements, but it would be really cool if we got more things that played with form that um, just, yeah, like I say, push the boundaries of what's possible with multimodal composition. So that those two answers are like, I would like people who have never done this before to take a chance. And I'd like people who really know what they're doing to take a chance with new forms and new ideas. I think we need both of those groups of people to continue shaping CCBP to being something that's uh, you know, continually amazing. Throughout our interview, Stephanie provided a wealth of knowledge, not only about her role as a project director at Computers and Composition Digital Press, but also about the insights one gains working in such great detail with multimodal projects. Her descriptions and discussions help illustrate how much work goes on behind the scenes to each digital collection or book we find online and she added a necessary level of transparency for anyone who is interested in producing or reading multimodal texts. With that, I'll leave you with Stephanie's final thoughts. I just wish that more people knew about CCDP and would consider it as a publishing venue.
And I say this as somebody who has been working with CCDP for many years, who has had different pieces of my own, like individual chapters published in CCDP, and also putting together a proposal for a project that I hope will be published by CCDP in the future. So I've seen these sort of different areas of entry. Um, and I know how supportive we are of authors and how excited we are about projects. So I think that we just, we need more people who consider us and go, yeah, this is a place where my work should go. So the more word we can get out and say, have you heard about computers and composition digital press? And have you thought about it as a place for your work? That would be fantastic.